Hey people of VC, it's Andy at Cloudy Mulder with another seven records rescued from the ever expanding inbox. It it nearly went down this month, but I think we may have just about broken even. But it's time to skim a few off the top. Um, I've given them a listen and I'll show you what I've been playing basically. Um, first up, this is in human nature self-titled album in human nature by uk uh, thrash uh, band um released this year uh, they categorize themselves as crossover thrash but it it doesn't really i don't really see them as a crossover thrash band it simply doesn't fit the category categorization for them that i have in my head um but they are a clear indication that uk thrash metal is alive as well and well um melodic riffs in there relentlessly heavy at times uh throaty raspy vocals uh usually i'm not a fan of the overly growly shouty vocals but um on this one it works really well uh, favorite track on here is probably uh, Carnivorous Lunar Activities on side A. Um, I say fans of Slayer musically and um, uh, Zetro era Exodus uh, vocal style as well. I'm hopefully going to see these guys play in Edinburgh in a couple of weeks. Um, Support uh, with aggressive uh, perfector. Um, I got this from Bandcamp and um, it took a while to get all the guys to, to together to sign them. In fact, so long I think this this guy at the end um, they mentioned something that they had a, a lineup change, and I'm guessing uh, uh, now I think this guy this guy's name here is uh, uh, A J C. Given the just say on the back somewhere about the um, yeah rhythm guitar Alex uh, Coward um, but I thought that originally said air guitar which I thought was a very uh, strange uh, member of the band but uh, yeah so it's it's you can just about see the uh, signatures on there so that's always cool when, when bands sort of go the extra mile like that on the band camp lyric sheet as well um, <clears throat> comes on kind of red and with a black uh, smudge or splatter um, labels the same both sides polyline sleeve as well which is always nice from uh, uh, when bands are kind of putting out there certainly their first album with the 20 things on a budget it was good when you get the extra mile um, so yeah inhum in got to be inhum in Try again. In Human Nature, self-titled 2019. That's on Injustice uh, Records. Check them out. Now, when I do think about uh, crossover thrash, um, this is the type of band that, um, uh, well, it didn't spring to mind because I got this as a, um, a as a bit of a blind buy, really. When when purchasing things on Discogs, um, if somebody, if a seller has an offer of something like three albums for a single um postage and packing price i will try and find some stuff to fill out the order and this was one of them that fit the bill never heard them before and um but very glad i i got hold of it so as i mentioned they are a they do have a more of a classic crossover thrash sound they're from uh canada um british columbia i believe everything about this uh screams uh canadian pressing um it's recorded um bullfrog studios vancouver british columbia um, the uh, it's got ProCan 1988, but the actual um, yeah at the top here this is made in England. So this is on Mike Ears Records. Um, as I say, it it does fit more of my expectation of crossover thrash, and it pretty much has the same pace on every song through the album, except maybe uh, Total Extremes, which has more of a, a real sort of straight up punk feel uh, about it. It's not it didn't blow me away. It's not going to blow you away, but 
if you like the crossover thrash sound, I think this is one uh, definitely worth trying to track down to get something a little bit different. The vocals on it sound a little bit like um, maybe Mike Muir from uh, Suicidal Tendency debut album. As a lot of crossover bands do, I can guess. Um, there's the label. I like that. It's kind of it's got, kind of got a homebrew feel to it. Very simple, but uh, effective. And uh, the inner sleeve as well is quite nice too. There we go. Um, typical thrashy nature of the song. Songs about war, songs about religion, all that kind of thing. But uh, well worth checking out if you come across it. Uh, next up, number three. Apocrypha, the Forgotten uh, Scroll. Um, I think this was originally released in 1987, certainly in the US, but um, Europeans didn't get a press until 1988. So this has come out on uh, Roadrunner, so it's a Dutch pressing. Now I've had the, this is their debut album, I've had the, their second album, The Eyes of Time, uh, for a few years now, so I've been looking out uh, for this one, so delighted when I finally came uh, came up and uh, found a copy. Um, so it's kind of it's a little bit on the speed metal side, border on thrash at times, but with um, Ingvi Malmsteen esque guitar shredding thrown into the mix. Uh, Tony Fredinelli, this chap here. So he's the uh, he's the chief um, uh, shredder on here. Um, lots of overindulgent uh, guitar wankery on here, which is okay at times, especially in a proper band. Um, I much prefer. I, I don't mind if people go off on one a little bit and do a bit of guitar fiddling when um, uh, you know there's a band around them and they can bring it back to the song. Uh, Steve. Plocky car, pluck, I don't know, don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, he's got a really kind of um, gritty, almost thrash metal-y voice at times. I certainly wouldn't put that voice with that picture there. But um, <clears throat> it kind of holds it together. I wasn't surprised at all to read that it was produced by uh, Marty Friedman, obviously pre-Megadeth uh, days here, being a serial a shredder himself. Riding in the Night is by far the standout song on here. It has it has the shred, but uh, it is also kind of the most well-rounded sort of heavy metal sounding song on the album itself. But yeah, really pleased, really enjoyed. I still enjoy um, the uh, the Eyes of Time probably a bit more, but then I am much more familiar with it. But uh, yeah, just delighted to uh, pick up. A copy, say on uh, Roadrunner, no inner sleeve uh, to talk about much, but uh, the classic Roadrunner um, label. Uh, next up, we have a UK uh, band um, playing the traditional heavy metal in the mould of new wave of British heavy, heavy metal. But this band sounds like they were um, they were bottled in in the eighties and um, were finally uncorked. Um, this century they don't sound like your typical modern traditional heavy metal band that's tried to sound like an 80s band they actually sound like they could have been there they are that good and that is uh amulet and their new album the inevitable war this is their second album but it's taken five years for them to come out with this uh, since the, uh, the first one, uh, they've had a, a few lineup changes along the way, which I don't think particularly helped. Um, great album artwork on this one. Let me open it out. Which is sort of historic battle. And there's the, uh, the gatefold. Um, took me a few spins to get into this actually. I did um, an unboxing of this when I got it because I was so impressed by Plastic Head Records and they chucked in a load of freebies and flexi discs and, uh, and the packaging was amazing. Then I gave it a spin and thought mm, I don't like it that much. Put it in the inbox and there it sat for a good, I think it was probably May it came out, a good three or four months and um, 
it deserved another spin recently and I absolutely love it now. It is really, really good. I think I was probably taken aback by the slightly different vocal style. So uh, Federico um, Mace Mazza is the, uh, the new guy on vocals. You can see there in the middle looking uh, very proud of himself. And I would say I would put the, the change in style akin to Iron Maiden when they went from Paul Diano to um, Bruce Dickinson. I mean, he certainly has, this guy sings more like Bruce Dickinson than um, uh, Paul Diano. And I think the, uh, the previous vocalist was a little bit more of the sort of the punky edge that, uh, that Paul Diano had. Not that either of them sound like Paul Diano and Bruce Dickinson, I'm just kind of... Um, using those two as a comparison between the completely different styles between the two singers and, and changing your singer can really make or break uh, a band but these guys seem um, completely unaffected uh, by it and we'll probably go on for strength to strength because I say this is absolutely superb um, album my only criticism is uh, clear green vinyl I hate clear green vinyl it's, I don't mind colour vinyl at all but there's something about green vinyl I just don't like at all. Um, but it sounds fantastic. Um, Favourite tracks on here. Um, God, there's, there's so many. Call of the Siren is... Um, yeah, Call of the Siren is probably my favourite one on here. But um, yeah, check out Ambulance if you haven't already. Um, really, really good band. First album is fantastic as well. Next up. This is uh, Hazard, as you can see from the. Uh, it's not. I thought that was. It's, it's not even a sticker. It's. Uh, it says featuring Herman Frank X accept. So this is uh, Herman Frank's uh, uh, band following his, uh, I guess, brief stint in accept. Uh, it's on. It's on Mausoleum and Attic as well. It's actually a Canadian pressing rather than um, a Belgian pressing. So, um, yeah, so interesting that it's ended up in the, in the UK, nonetheless. I mean, Mausoleum Records don't necessarily turn up that often in the UK. When they do, I grab them. So to find a, uh, effectively a Canadian um, uh, release of a Mausoleum record, even uh, more rare, I would guess. Um, uh, true to form with Mausoleum, you... You wouldn't have raised an eyebrow in the 80s even with uh, him and Frank on here. It's, um, but it's a decent find today. It's uh, nothing mind blowing, just some heavy metal from a band I'm unfamiliar with. That 30 years on, 40 years on, uh, just sounds really, really good. Uh, an album of two halves, really. Um, first, first side, the vocals seem a little bit of a, a struggle to me. To be honest with you, it has quite a commercial. Um, heavy metal rock sound. Um, the song "Come On" sounds a little bit like Ozzy uh, is singing to it at times. But the album starts to pick up from there, from the the last track uh, onto uh, side B. Um, so "Just a Dream" has a it's a good heavy metal romp. Has a bit of the uh, touch of the tigers of Pang Tang about it. Um, satisfied in tonight on side B. Very new over British heavy metal sound. A, a great stuff. Killer. Is slow but heavy and then just absolutely bursts into life. Um, that may just be the best track on the record. Every song sounds a little bit different. Um, uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem to have a, a single identity throughout the whole record, but it doesn't really seem to suffer uh, because of it. Um, yeah, despite being on. Canadian pressing and distributed by Attic in uh, Canada. It, it has the classic um, mausoleum label. And the other sleeve is quite interesting as well. It's a... I, I would have thought this was a joke if it wasn't a kind of a stock uh, inner sleeve. So we have some Roadrunner Records um, merch on the back for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that comes in. There must be a tie-in with mausoleum and Attic, I guess. Um, but the warning at the bottom says uh, some of these albums may contain demonic references and lyrical content that may be offensive to some. Uh, and then on the other side, there's another warning. This is the Attic Records 
merch side, I guess, and it said rec um, record albums can only be played backwards on professional turntables, specifically equipped with this functionality, i.e. used as by professional disc jockeys. Attempted to do so on equipment designated for home use will result in extensive damage to your stereo. So, clearly worried about uh, the poor youth in Canada with the demonic records and the uh, the thought of having to play uh, records back once. So there we go. That was quite fun. Um, last but one, uh, a band which you may be surprised to see that I've enjoyed, and that's uh, Warrant with a Dirty, a Rotten, a Filthy, a Stinking Rich, 1989. This is actually a US pressing I found. Um, there's a lot of good shit from the, the late 80s that I let pass me by because I thought at the time, well, it was bad shit. Um, a little more open-minded now. I don't really care for just like the enforced segregation of the, the metal genres. I just enjoy what I enjoy these days. Um, still not something I would necessarily gravitate towards, but do enjoy on uh, occasion. And to be honest with you, the price I paid for this it was a no-brainer, really. Um, way less than the lowest price on Discogs and in fantastic condition as well. The only disappointing thing about it, I guess, is the uh, the inner sleeve has clearly been split at some point and has been fixed with uh, clear tape. I think I would have rather it been um, still in a slightly destroyed state, but otherwise it's, I mean, it's, it's in well-loved condition, the inner sleeve, but the record itself is uh, in excellent condition um so i like salt songs like on here so 32 pennies down boys um so damn pretty riding high are all pretty good um not necessarily as my go-to in terms of heavy metal and 32 pennies there are actually 32 pennies i counted them i do like that attention to detail on the album and i love this front cover picture as well um like studying these see if i can find anything uh, hidden um i found out who the artist was because it's all written on the uh the watch down here i expected it to say rolex but it says ryden so mark ryden is the uh the artist uh fairly famous artist by all accounts uh i did wonder what uh the date of the 28th Meant. I couldn't find any reference to that, so if you know, and uh, if there is a, a story behind that, or whether it's just random, do let me know in the comments. Uh, the power ballads do have me forcing my fingers down my throat, to be honest with you. Uh, I may be softening in my old age, but I don't think I'll ever get around those. Um, yeah, heaven on here. Not really my cup of tea at all. But uh, yeah, I'm glad that I'm, uh, I finally got my head turned around to this kind of music, and uh, as I say, uh, enjoy it on occasion. Usually have a night where I'll just put about four or five different albums aside and um, play it all and just uh, rock out in my room all by myself. And, uh, here we go. US uh, Columbia Red Label. And last of all, another on uh, Mausoleum. This time it is a Belgian release and it's a Spanish heavy metal band and it's straight up heavy metal. And this is from Panzer from 1983. I mean, there's nothing not to like about this album at all. I don't even mind the uh, the fact that all the lyrics and song names and everything are in uh, Spanish. Um, I mean, I often sing along to the English vocals on albums, only to find out that what I'm actually singing, if I read it, find out what the lyrics are isn't what um, the vocalist is actually singing so it's no real difference here is it uh, god knows what i'm singing along to but uh, if it's good music makes me happy then why not um i did look up what this album try and translate what this album was. i think it's something like every man for himself but there's a few other variations so uh spanish speakers out there um you can put me right on that if you want this is the second album they released, uh, they released, wanted to release five albums in the 80s. There's the band. But this is the only one that got a 
a kind of European release outside of uh, Spain. And as I mentioned many times before, uh, Mausoleum uh, is a label filled with sort of also ran releases. They kind of mopped up the second tier heavy metal bands and, uh, and put out their, their stuff. Bands that couldn't get a big um, a big deal with any other labels. I mean, ultimately, Mausoleum um, went down the plug hole, but um, yeah, 30 years on, it's great. There's absolute gems out there. Yeah, wouldn't have made it back in the day, but um, absolutely a brilliant to hear now. Um, if I had to compare Panzer to somebody, I'd say early Demon and Tigers of Pang Tang uh, with the obligatory Iron Maiden. Galloping guitars are chucked in there as well. But I thoroughly enjoyed that one. Really, really good. Let's say there's another uh, mausoleum label, very similar to the one I showed before. So we have it as seven more albums rescued from the inbox. Those will go up on the shelf, and a few of those will get uh, regular spoons, certainly. Amulets and, uh, and Panzer are uh, uh, really good there. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think, as usual, and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.